Hello and welcome back to Season 2 of the Choose You Calgary podcast for Episode 8, featuring the Faculty of Kinesiology. As usual, my name is Max Surley and I'll be the host for today's chat. For those who are unaware, I work in the Undergraduate Admissions Office as a digital recruiter for the University of Calgary. For Episode 8, I am joined by Team Lead in the Undergraduate Office for the Faculty of Kines, Jody McGill, and Associate Dean in Academics, David Paskovich. We chatted about expectations for first-year kinesiology students, the admission requirements, and some unique opportunities available to pursue exclusively for kines students. Hope you enjoy the episode. So we have Jody and David here. Thank you for joining us today at 10 a.m. here at the TFDL. Uh, so we'll first start off with, um, before we get into what your faculty is all about and all the different things you, you offer through the Faculty of Kinesiology, what do you guys do here at the university? And either one of you can start. So I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'm the Associate Dean Academic in the Faculty of Kinesiology, and I really have three major functions. Uh, the first is to teach courses to our undergrad and graduate students. The second is to conduct research, and one of my major focuses or interests is in the area of sports psychology, and it uh, relates to athletes and coaches' stresses and, uh, related to performance in the Olympic environment. And the third, as I mentioned off the start, was uh, serving in the role as the Associate Dean Academic, and I really focus on the delivery of the academic program to students in the faculty, and the responsibilities range from dealing with student issues on a daily basis to guiding the curriculum review for our faculty. Yeah. And Jody? I'm team lead of the Undergraduate Advising Office in Kinesiology, so I oversee our um, academic advisors. That includes scheduling, program um, requirements, program planning for our students, as well as the practicum office, um, which offers students an opportunity to get some hands-on experience and experiential learning in workplaces while they're here on campus. Um, and we have a really nice, smaller faculty on campus, so we know our students and have a really good rapport with them. So, yeah. so if students, whether they be current or prospective, if they want information, detailed information about the program, you're the person to go to. Yeah, yeah. my team is the, is the one to go to. Um, it consists of myself, Aaron Scott, and Megan McSween, um, and Monica Del Rizzo. So we can get, definitely give them the answers they need or connect them with the offices that can, for sure. Awesome. And before we get into mission stuff, David, one more question for you quickly. Uh, what courses do you teach? Do you mention being specifically interested in sports psychology? Do you teach in there as well? or? Yeah, the area I teach in is uh, sports psychology. So there's an undergrad course, a first year core course, 253, that I, I sometimes uh, partner up with. And then the two courses I specifically teach are uh, sports psychology and then uh, at the 400 level, an applied sports psychology course as well. Can I ask how you got into that field, just out of pure curiosity? It just as a as a... And a individual growing up in Calgary playing a lot of sports. I had a brother and a sister that both played on uh, national teams for Canada, one volleyball, one basketball. My sister actually was the first uh, athlete to ever jersey retired here at the University of Calgary. Wow. She was a basketball player. It's a piece uh, of trivia right there. Yeah, and so uh, sport was always important and I was always curious about why some teams that were good didn't win and some teams that, that uh, weren't good did. And so uh, that was my journey about how do we enhance performance in the sport context. Amazing. So why don't we chat briefly on what it takes to get into kinesiology, just to make sure that everyone is on the same page. It is five specific courses. Correct. And no supplementary application, nothing of that sort. That's correct. Um, it is a competitive program. So number one would be a real keen interest in kinesiology and the different areas that we focus on. Um, and then you need your biology 30, chem 30, math 30-1, and English 30-1. Um, in order to be admitted, a fifth course would be used. Um, we leave those things up to admissions to answer just so that they're getting the correct information. Um, and then biomechanics majors and exercise and health physiology ma majors have a little bit of a different uh, twist on the math requirements. But yeah, that's it. We don't look at supplementary. Um, you know, there's a lot of programs that do, but kinesiology is not one of them. So we're looking at very high achieving students um, that are applying and getting into kinesiology. And for those who aren't from Alberta, math 30 or whatever it equates to means at the grade 12 level. Correct. correct. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. exactly it. Perfect. And so shifting in a little bit from a major, a minor, and a combined degree perspective, uh, what are the different streams, first off, for kinesiology? 
So this is a really common question. Um, the Faculty of Kinesiology at the University of Calgary offers a Bachelor of Kinesiology or Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology. Both are housed within the Faculty of Kinesiology. So the BSc in Kines is not with the Faculty of Science. Um, both degrees require 120 units, which is about 40 courses. Um, and if you're looking at the BSc in Kinesiology, about 63 of the 120 units have to be science-based courses. Um, students take a common core, which is really nice because the first year is very similar, regar regardless of the major that you're in. Kind of exploratory in that yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah. So you'll get anatomy, physiology, some activity courses, because we are about activity and healthy living. So students are required uh, to participate fully in the activities that are assigned to them. Um, they'll do uh, sports psychology, they're going to do a socio course, uh, sociology and sport. And this gives them uh, exposure to a breadth of kinesiology areas, because coming in they may have an idea that they want to be in exercise physiology or biomechanics or um, mind sciences, sure. but as they get exposed to the different areas that they probably have never really heard of or seen before. They kind of taper off in yeah, that Yeah, they start to find that focus, um, or it dispels what they thought they were going sure. for. Um, so there's a real benefit to that breadth of study in the first year. Um, depending on whether they're in a BKIN or a BSc in Kines, we do offer different majors, uh, biomechanics, exercise and health physiology, mind sciences, and leadership and pedagogy and coaching. We also offer a kinesiology major, which is pretty generic um, in that you can choose your options. Sure. So students can really tweak that kinesiology major to add in a, a minor from another faculty, some of the embedded certificates that are offered on campus. Um, and we see a large number of students go down to Australia, particularly mm -hmm. for exchange uh, during a term. Um, so that kinesiology major with the flexibility it offers in options really does align nicely with with those types of experiences as well um, as far as combined programs we do have some combined programs it's a bachelor of kinesiology with a bachelor of commerce uh, with Haskane school of business we have a bachelor of kinesiology majoring in pedagogy and that's combined with the workland school of education you could also do a Bachelor of Kinesiology combined with a Bachelor of Arts uh, in Dance, yes. specifically. Um, and those are basically what it does is it takes a six-year program, what's normally six years, to get two degrees and compresses it into five years, yeah. uh, 150 units. And at the end, you get two degrees, which is fantastic for a lot of students. The Kinesi and Dance option, just out of curiosity, it, is that a relatively new program that you guys are It's offering? a very new program. Yeah. We had our first cohort of four students graduate this past June, and some one student has gone on to graduate program uh, mm -hmm. focusing on dance. So it is a relatively new program. It's one of it's one of a kind in North America. There, I don't know of any other that is combining science with dance to the degree that we are. Right. And you touched on it a little bit just about what first year looks like for students. Is, so it's kind of a common core course, maybe somewhat similar to engineering in that sense, where they're taking a set you know, set path in a way. and Yeah, there's definitely yeah. first year courses that they require in order to progress in the degree. Uh, uh, the key one would be the anatomy and physiology. Yes. You take a course in fall and again in winter. They're built to be taken back to back. And almost every other course in kinesiology is building on that foundational knowledge. Uh, but there's also, as I said, some activity courses, uh, one related to learning new activities and being um, exposed to some different games or uh, sports that you may never have played before. Right. We're not out to make you know dancers be rugby players, yeah, but sure. we want them to have an experience that's new. Uh, and there's also a physiology course uh, in the first year that kind of introduces uh, using the gym, prescribing um, fitness plans, right. and going through that experience as a student as well. So when you're trying to get someone else to do it, yeah. you have recent recall of what yeah, it's very like. Very useful skills for yeah. personal as well as you know, your exactly. studies. So yeah. That's awesome. Class sizes, how, how do, what does it look like for the faculty of Kines? I know off the top of my head when I was an arts major, first year courses were 400 plus students, pretty overwhelming. What can students kind of expect in that area? First year courses typically, they're 250 to 300 we usually more towards 300 students yep. in the lecture portion. Yes. Almost all of our courses have labs 
um, that are required with the lecture. Uh, and the labs are quite small. You're going to get into maybe 25 to 50 students in a lab, and those are broken down further into smaller groups. Sure. Um, so students are really getting that hands-on experience. They're not one of 100 watching from the back row. They're front and center, you know, the anatomy, physiology, working in the cadaver labs. That's a really unique experience at the undergraduate level. And so when you're in a group of five, you've got the support of those classmates and you're working and getting that hands-on experience yourself right. instead of, yeah, just w watching from the wings. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's uh, really beneficial with those labs and those small little groups is that students make friends. So they start to make those connections with their cohort uh, and those last for the duration of their degree right. and quite often beyond. So yeah. it's a great way for students to, f to create that community and feel part of a community coming in in first year. Yeah, very quickly coming mm -hmm. into first yeah. year and doing all kinds of different experiences. And you mentioned working with cadavers. That happens in your first year study too? First year, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, the anatomy physiology, um, there is a lab. Students are introduced to it very gently, very uh, thoughtfully. Sure. Uh, so there's a lot of discussion about it. Um, the cadavers are draped. They're uh, looked after in a very respectful manner. That lab is uh, no cameras. There's a very, students have to sign a waiver. There's a very high level of expectation on conduct within that lab, but it is unique in a undergraduate level or at universities. A lot are going to simulators or they're doing offsite visits to get that type of experience, but we have it right here on campus. So. Awesome. Yeah. Quickly touching on the honors research opportunities, is that something where a student can start that and it's very flexible in what they can study? They kind of present something they're interested in and then go from there, is that fair to say? Yeah, so typically in the fourth year, the student has to have a, a certain GPA yeah. and then what happens is they connect with a, a faculty advisor, so somebody that they're interested in doing research with. That supervisor then agrees to work with the student, so the student then does have their opportunity to to engage in research with, uh, I'll, I'll say, a topical area that, that sure. is of interest to them. Certainly a lot of different options that stu students can use and take to tailor where they want to go and what they want to study. Yeah, everything from, from cellular level, uh, biomechanical issues with Dr. Uh, Dr. Walter Herzog to, yeah. again, societal uh, issues yeah. uh, with uh, Dr. William Burdell in the sociocultural area. Awesome. And before we move on to the next question, I do want to ask one more thing, because this is a common question that I get whether when I'm recruiting or answering emails. The Human Performance Lab has dealt with some pretty interesting stuff. I know off the top of my head, they're Nike prototype shoes, tailor-made golf clubs. Uh, first off, is that true? And second, is what kind of other really interesting, unique, maybe surface-level things go on in the Human Performance Lab? So that is true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dr. Ben O'Neig, Dr. Darren Stefanishin have, have uh, led a lot of that. Uh, certainly wanna, wouldn't, want, wouldn't want to leave other people out, but uh, uh, with regards to uh, the construction of running shoes, to golf clubs, to hockey sticks, yeah. uh, they've been responsible for a lot of that. In terms of cutting edge research, they've certainly uh, led the field, I think, and, and, and the Human Performance Lab uh, with regard to biomechanics is, is known worldwide. And so they have a reputation of, of people who are, are leading the cutting edge in the research that they're doing. So shifting over a little bit to the practicum side of things and co-ops, internships, practicum, they can all fall under that umbrella. And it's a big thing for students when they're looking at their future and what kind of practical experience do they get. What do, what do practicums look like for students in the Faculty of Kinesiology? I know off the top of my head, I've seen many students go work with the Dinos team as an AT or, you know, working with the Children's Hospital or whatever it may be. So could you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so uh, practicum opportunities are available in kinesiology. You can do up to three of them in a degree. And they count, each counts as a senior kinesiology option. Um, we have well over 100 diverse practicum placements. They are in all different kinds of fields. They're all different kinds of organizations. And we do have a practicum coordinator who's curated this, uh, started with about 20 and is well over 100 now. So these can range from strength and conditioning with the Calgary Flames to biomechanics research assistant in our human performance lab. We have uh, child um, wellness and fitness promotion or health promotion through Be Fit for Life. Um, we've got... Uh, with the Thrive Center, which is the, the center that helps um, formulate well or 
exercise plans for um, survivors of cancer on campus. So there's lots of different opportunities. Having the Sports Medicine Centre, the Human Performance Lab, the Olympic Oval, the Dinos Athletics, Active Living, as well as strong relationships with other faculties and resources means our students have a lot of ways to incorporate uh, experience unique to them and unique to what their goals are. Um, and it really can set a person apart when applying for competitive after-degree programs. We've seen students hired out of these. We've seen them uh, receive reference letters. So when they're going on to uh, master's programs or other, other um, aspects uh, after their undergraduate degree, they really can set them apart. And it gives them a network um, that they can build while an undergrad. So that also helps as they're looking for work or uh, looking at other opportunities Absolutely. after. Absolutely. Makes yeah. them a little more, more dynamic when exactly. they're looking to get hired. And mm -hmm. Awesome. So quickly, staying on that topic, uh, when can students first start practicum study? In order to do a practicum, you have to have two years of study under your belt. Um, a big part of that is so that you're applying the theory that you've taken in. Um, and it also, it, so it benefits the student in that they can start practicing what they've learned. But it also benefits the practicum placement in that they're getting someone with a skill set that can actually do the work um, with them rather than just fluffing towels and answering phones yeah. um we don't we don't like to see that we really want to see them get in there and get their hands dirty for lack of a better term um but one thing we do find with the practicums is students often come in with kind of a set vision that physiotherapy i'll use as a very popular example and as they become a practicum student in a physiotherapy clinic they start to realize some of the aspects of w what that work is like um, because they've had the opportunity, and that can move them to a different area. Uh, they may pick up a practicum in occupational therapy where they'd never really thought about that before, didn't really have an understanding about what that is, and now they've uncovered something that that's really what I want to do. Um, and the reverse can be true. It's a process of discovery and a process of elimination um, that's really great because if they can do three, they can try three totally different things or the same type of role in three different organizations and really get a sense of where their fit is. Absolutely. And you mentioned uh, over 100 different practicum options. Correct. A number I'm sure that is still growing or always growing Correct. in that regard. Are they primarily local options or are there some international options as well? All of our practicums are in and around Calgary. Okay. Um, we have really strong relationships with those organizations. Yeah. So we're checking in and making sure that the quality of the experience on both sides um, is being upheld. And, and uh, if there's anything that has to be adjusted, that that's addressed quickly. We've touched on it vaguely throughout this conversation here, just about jobs and postgraduate employment. So... It's a big reason why students study. They want work after. They want to make sure that their four years of time spent pays off in that, in that sense. So what kind of employment prospects at a very basic level can students kind of expect going through kinesiology? So kinesiology students can work in a number of health uh, and fitness related careers. Many as kinesiologists who find ways to improve the health, wellness and performance of the human body at work and sport and daily life. We have a large number of others who complete a kines degree in order to apply for graduate studies, uh, often related to the major that they completed as an undergrad, uh, or other professional degrees such as medicine, physiotherapy, or law. Okay, so one question I did want to ask was about the student experience for a faculty of kinesiology student. Being in the classroom is the primary reason they're here, but there's always going to be ample opportunity to have fun outside of the classroom, get involved with other ways outside of the classroom. So. Where does the Faculty of Kines come in for you Calgary students? Yeah, there's lots of opportunities and, um, you know, we're really proud of our Kinesiology Student Society. We call it the KSS. Uh, and they had won awards uh, three years running uh, for the top student society on campus. And they have all sorts of events. They have hump days on the first Wednesday where they do bake sales and promote some of the activities and um things that they're offering to the kinesiology students. Uh, things like Kin Games, so that's an annual event that goes from city to city across Canada and is a highly competitive and contested um, s session of games over a weekend where different kinesiology faculty students um, participate and they have to do a dance routine and all sorts of fun. So kines students are, are welcome to join in on that. This year they have a peer mentoring program where they're meant their, um, and tutoring program, sorry, they're 
uh, offering tutoring for free for Kines students and nursing students. Nursing students take some of our courses, and uh, it's for five specific courses uh, at the junior level just to help students make sure that they're keeping on top of their homework um, and they're making that connection with a senior student. Yes. They also offer King Camp, which is a really unique experience for kin- for new students coming into the faculty. Um, it's a weekend in o- early October, and students sign up. They're bused out to a uh, kids' camp out yeah. in usually Carolina, Alberta, and they basically become little kids for the weekend, and they just have a ton of fun. It's a great way to network with their new cohort and all these new people that they're meeting, as well as the senior students who are there, and they talk about their experience, and they kind of lend a little bit of sage advice on how to navigate the degree and how to be kind to yourself while you're starting out, because first term is really tricky. They also have a ton of events. Um, They have dodgeball, and they had... People dressed as cows, inspiring exercise in the atrium one day. And there's lots of uh, fundraising they do as well. And at the end of each year, they have a gala. And the gala is usually off campus, and it's a formal event, so students are dressed to the nines. And it's really neat to see the photos from that and see the the transformation from sweats and hoodies during during the term to, you know, a really beautiful, polished event at the end of the year to celebrate all the success and hard work. So faculty of kinesiology students can dress well is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> we'll uh, end with this question here. Um, what is essentially your elevator pitch to a prospective student thinking about coming to the university? Why the faculty of kinesiology here? And I know a big selling point for us is number one sports science school in North America, number seven in the world. Um, what can you say to students who are, you know, maybe on the fence in terms of, okay, I want to do kinesiology, but why come here versus school X? We get that question a lot, (laughs) especially from students who are coming to campus from outside of Calgary. So, um, being that I'm not from Calgary, I'm born and raised in Victoria, BC. Um, I chose to come to Calgary. Um, number one, U Calgary has a beautiful campus, lots of green space, uh, friendly faces all over the place, um, which is great. We have some amazing new buildings and amenities, and it's just a short bike ride to the river in downtown, so getting around is really easy. Uh, Calgary's only about an hour from the stunning Rocky Mountains and Peter Lahey Park, um, and there's a ton of year-round activities that are available there. So for kinesiology students, proximity to activities is really important. Uh, Calgary's also the training ga- ground for national and international sports teams, and our community embraces activity on all levels. I feel really lucky to be um, to be in Calgary and uh, there's another Vancouver Island girl with our office and there's one from the East Coast as well and we all love it here Um, and a big part is our faculty specifically being a little bit smaller on campus compared to some of the others we really do know our our students uh, the faculty members are super engaged with the students um, and that really sets us apart they're not just you know coming and going from campus they're actually making connections while they're here Um, So that really creates a a nice sense of family um, and students really buy into that and they start helping to build that community as well through the Kinesiology Student Society and so on. Uh, The students really are collaborative. Um, We see them often supporting each other in their successes and accomplishing their goals. Um, And the faculty and the staff, we get to know our students. It creates relationships that help students build their network from day one on campus and often extends well beyond graduation. It's one heck of a pitch. How about you, David? And I would just add to uh, our ranking as a sports science school. We have uh, an incredibly diverse faculty who are often world leaders in what they do. Uh, As Jody had mentioned, we're relatively small, so there's a tremendous opportunity for our undergrad students to be involved in undergraduate research, to be involved in the honors program. So for that reason alone, just the contact hours that they have with, with people who are leading in what they may want to do in the future, I think is, is an excellent opportunity for these students. Yeah. They don't necessarily get lost in the shuffle of, of bigger faculty in that sense. Not at all. And I think, and, and Jody wouldn't say this, but we're exceptional in the student programmers that we have at the, in, our, in our faculty. And so they take it upon themselves to make sure that... that that doesn't happen, that they establish a strong relationship with the students, and so they don't get lost in the shuffle. Awesome. Well, that's everything I have, so thank you, Jody and David, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.
A huge thank you to Jody and David for joining me on episode 8 of the Choose You Calgary podcast, and thanks to you for tuning in. You can discover more about the Faculty of Kinesiology on their website, kinesiology.ucalgary.ca, or you can check out their various social channels. If I missed anything today or you have questions or concerns, please send me a note at digital.recruiter at ucalgary.ca or you can send me a DM on our Facebook and Instagram channels. That's all for today. Thanks again for joining and we'll see you for the next one.